So this is one of my clownfish, and it's an enemy. Now we recently purchased this green bubble tip anemone one week prior to this pair of clownfish. And as these two were housed together as potential breeding pairs, you know I had to get them. And it was so awesome to witness the symbiotic relationship between the clownfish and the green bubble tip anemone. And also it makes it a lot easier having to feed this anemone less because the clownfish also provide nutrients and food for the anemone. It's like having someone live in your house and feed you all the time. But I do have to admit, this one clownfish, the one that you see in the anemone right there, it is very possessive and territorial over its new home. And you know, it's kind of a bummer because I wish the other clownfish was able to enjoy this anemone just as much as this clownfish does. And I also find it miraculous that this species of saltwater fish actually is immune to the sting of an anemone as opposed to other fish that would be sucked in, stung, and devoured by the big mouth of that anemone. And these two little gems are Ocellaris clownfish. And now in the next couple scenes, you'll witness how this one clownfish is so much more possessive and will not even let the other clownfish near it. And the only reason it seems to be staying close to that other clownfish is to make sure it doesn't go anywhere near its home. So if you have a pair of clownfish and one seems to be territorial over an anemone, what do you think I should do? Should I get another anemone for this tank? Or should I both let them fight and duel out the battle to who's gonna claim this home? Also, we haven't found a name for these two yet, so please, if you want, contribute down below in the comments section. And what do you think we should name these two little guys? You know that there are 30 different species of clownfish. Also, in the wild, schools of clownfish have a strict hierarchy where they only keep and allow the most aggressive female to stay at the top of the school. Another interesting fact are that all clownfish are born as a male. And when the dominant female dies, the dominant male will turn itself into a female. Anemone fact check, that there are over a thousand different anemone species and only 10 of them can coexist with clownfish. Now in this shot, you're probably asking yourself what happened to the anemone, it was just out, it was just full, but no, it just took a dump. And yes, anemones have to expel their waste too. And similar to corals, they will retract and deflate allowing them to expel any caca poo poo that they needed to out of their body. However, what happens when this process takes place is that it kind of makes it very difficult for the clownfish to get cozy as it was once before in a huge, luscious and soft home. Now that the home has been retracted, it has to be patient and wait. And now the frequency of this actually happening all depends on how frequent that you actually feed your anemone on a weekly basis. I used to feed this anemone two to three times per week. However, now that it has two clownfish and one of them is hosting with this anemone, this feeding frequency has been reduced to only one time per week. And I feed these clownfish daily on marine flakes. And even with a squished anemone, I could sit back and watch these guys all day long. And of course, as cliche as it may sound, yes, I fell in love with Clownfish after Finding Nemo came out as a movie. And of course, if you ever went snorkeling before and you've witnessed any coral reef and how much these fish stand out from other fish is absolutely amazing. And these two beauties, of course, are captive raised and if all goes well, hopefully we'll produce some amazing clownfish babies here. And due to their color lineage and morphology, now if these two make babies, they can possibly come out all black and white with no orange. How cool would that be? And it's so crazy because this little guy will not give up. He keeps trying to fluff up this anemone, but it ain't happening. So this clownfish is asking you to just like this video because I think if you smash this video and give it a big like, I think this anemone may just pop back up. So thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for watching our new anemone, our two new baby clownfish. So make sure you're subscribed to this channel because if these two have babies someday, I definitely want you to be here to witness it and to be a part of it. And also in our next video, we will be feeding this anemone for the first time. So you definitely wanna see that. But until then, just stick around for the end of this video because hopefully soon enough, this anemone is gonna re-sprout, reopen up, and look all nice and pretty again. So I'm gonna let nature take its course. I'm gonna step away for a few and we're gonna come back in, I'd say about two hours. Okay, so it's been about an hour and 45 minutes and look, 
that amount of time has allowed this anemone to re-sprout itself up, recreate a nice cushiony home for this greedy little clownfish that does not want to share with anybody. And that whole entire cycle of the anemone from going from nice and luscious and full and big all the way down to a shriveled little raisin took about 24 hours and almost repeats its cycle by itself like this clownfish is all by itself every 48 hours. Once again, thank you for watching this video. Thank you for liking this video, subscribing to this channel, sharing this video, and dropping a comment down below. And these clownfish, thank you for watching the tour of their new crib. As always, stay adventurous. A1A Adventure. Also make sure to check out this recommended playlist or this recommended video for you.